quick look at the, this is the, that's the dome of the 40 inch there refractor across from we are currently in the dome of the 41 inch 41 inch reflector here. I just kind of pan around a little bit. Very cool, very nice day. We are We're also going to get part of where no man has gone before. <laughs> so that's the floor moving. The shutters are closed now, and if you look carefully at the very top, you'll see someone's got Spider-Man up there at the very top for a joke. That's an 85 foot long opening. Okay. 11 feet wide, 85 feet long. The shutters move apart as if they were huge elevator doors. And the entire dome turns. So you ready to see the dome turn? Yeah. I'm just moving oh, awesome. a little bit. As the telescope's tracking from east to west, we can turn the dome every few minutes. The people that put Spider-Man up there were pretty <laughs> confident no one would ever spend the effort to get him down, but it was an undertaking. They had to have the floor all the way up. Further, they built a scaffolding, but they actually had a reason for doing this. They were attempting to use something called a come-along yeah. lever with a couple of hooks to force the shutters up here together because yeah. that's about as wide as your fist and the opening down there is about as wide as your finger. Now an ordinary, when this was first constructed, an ordinary evening operations, how many people did it take up here to, to run the scope? Oh, probably one or two. That's pretty good. Yeah, because it was always electrically powered. Somebody would run up after having checked the weather and you could, you could have gone onto the outside balcony to yeah. gaze to see what the weather was doing. But today, we have better ways of figuring out what the weather is going to be doing. And we're not using this telescope for research in these days. Yeah. So uh, someone would stand up there and open the shutters, then come back down again. Typically, back then, the floor would have been all the way up yeah. on the telescope sideways. You could use the spiral staircase, you'd have to, to turn the two wheels here, which I believe they're no longer there, were locks or brakes for the hour angles and the declination. Yeah. I'm going to move the telescope just a little bit. Okay. Slew it to the east. Oh, just the sound is cool. Click. It always clicks. <laughs> and if it were turned on now, it would be tracking continually toward the west. The sound is very War of the Worlds. <laughs> very War of the Worlds kind yes, of sound. It it, it's a or fitting sound to it. T Rex <laughs> yeah. attacking the school bus. Yeah. Uh, so the floor can go as high as the balcony. We have some great pictures. And I'm hoping we can get the gift shop open for you. Here's a picture in uh, 1927. Young Bill Morgan came to get his degree and yep. became one of the more respected astronomers. He proved that we live in a spiral galaxy. He took the same kinds of stars using this telescope and taking spectra. He was able to determine, just as we would be able to for the two stars here, that they are the same kind of a light bulb. Yeah. And then he saw the same spectra on stars that were, oh, in this case, 144 times dimmer, so they're 12 times farther away. He found a whole bunch of the same stars farther away and was able to determine, eventually, he was looking past th three spiral arms of our galaxy. Interesting. So that was pretty amazing. And he got a standing ovation when he brought this to the attention of astronomers at the American Astronomical Society. He never However, he's generally given credit of our where we are in this spiral arm of our galaxy. Here he is in 1927 taking the 10,000th image of the sun. And when this picture wow. was taken, the floor was about halfway up, and the chairs behind me that are here for our regularly scheduled Saturday tours or weekday tours, if there are more than 20 people and we can't fit them on the elevator, back then they were up there. So had you come back then, you would not have seen the telescope. The floor had been all the way up. You could have just seen the pier, but you'd have to go up the steps onto the upper balcony. Interesting. Six years later, 
perhaps our most famous picture in 1921. Einstein. Albert Einstein. I've seen one, that. You've seen this before. Okay, yeah. that's Harriet Parsons who got her degree in 1921. Yeah. Yoinks, a woman astronomer. <laughs> That's on the Wikipedia uh, ah, page for, uh, the, for the 40 inch. That's where I've seen that. This is E.E. E. Barnard of Barnard Star fame, and he also proved that the clouds of dust in between the stars yeah. are clouds of dust and not areas void of stars. That's uh, his niece who helped put together the famous Barnard Atlas of the Milky Way after he died. Uh, but she also worked here. This is George von Biesbrock, a Belgian American oh, astronomer. Right who is known to have traveled to every new telescope and be photographed with it. We have pictures taken long after we knew who it was, Sky and Telescope. Yeah, had figured out who they were. this telescope, very, a very poor out of focus image, but you can see Van B standing up there. Yeah. And now, he lived to be quite old. This, this older image has like a cage on the back that's yeah. not there now. This is the spectroheliograph, at least co-invented by George Hale. And that's the same instrument Bill Morgan used. Seven years later, six years later, in 1927, he's taking the 10,000th image of the sun. Oh, okay, yeah, there's the instrument. same cage, yeah. yeah. Interesting. And this used to be top of the line, which would give us the right ascension and declination, but no longer is operational. But that's all right, because Kenworth is so good. And out here at Yerkes Observatory in Wisconsin on Lake Geneva and Williams Bay and I thought I'd do a quick walk around. We just had a tour inside. Very cool. That is the dome right there for the 40 inch refractor. Biggest operational refractor ever built. And we step over here a bit walking across. You can see the other two domes in where the solar telescope used to be. We got to go in there as well. Very cool. It was built back in the 1890s. Now they're doing a little bit of woodwork construction here. There is the front dome. Back in that dome right there is where they house the 61 inch telescope that does Skynet. Still does uh, active research as part of the Skynet, not the Terminator Skynet, but the gamma ray burst. Uh, system of observatories. That is the biggest telescope on Skynet right there. Very cool. It's another quick walk around to the back of Yerkes Observatory here in Wisconsin. There's a 40 inch refractor dome. Up here they have a smaller, I believe it was a 12 inch that they use for uh, public outreach. And that back dome is where Skynet is located. Not Skynet the Terminator computer, but Skynet the gamma ray burst hunter, one of them. And right here I thought was something interesting and we got to go up inside it is part of the where the solar heliostat scope uh, used to exist. That area right there used to be able to slide off. There was a rotating telescope that observed the sun and there's a long focal length bench in there where they would project the sun. And I just thought it was kind of interesting to note uh, it's not in operation anymore, the instrument's not in there, but this section of the observatory here used to slide back. Kind of cool.